move our attention now to the technology heavyweights who have gathered in Washington alongside U.S. senators to discuss the regulation of artificial intelligence. The bosses attending the meeting included former Microsoft CEO Bill Gates, Meta's Mark Zuckerberg, and the head of Google, Sundar Pichai. Tesla CEO and owner of X, formerly known as Twitter, Elon Musk, also attended and said there was now an overwhelming consensus for regulation and described the meeting as historic. There are wildly held fears that the technology could lead to mass, lay mass layoffs, turbocharge fraud, and make misinformation more convincing. It now seems new laws will be passed, but the time frame remains unclear. I think it's clear that there's a strong consensus, a woman, overwhelming consensus that sh there should be some AI regulation, that it would be in the best interests of the, the people to do so. And, and I think we'll probably see something happen. I don't know what, on what time frame um, or, how, or exactly how it will manifest itself. Yeah, I don't know what exactly, <laughs> perhaps, perhaps the Department of AI. Um, it probably, let's say, I think the probability of there being some sort of AI regulatory agency that stands on its own, similar to the FAA or FCC, is likely at some point. For more on this, let's bring in a rise U.S. correspondent, Rotimi Kade, who joins us live from New Jersey. Rotimi, great to see you. Now, can you tell us more about this meeting in Washington between the leaders of big tech and senators? Well, just as you said, uh, the, uh, some of the tech executives, um, the heavyweights um, all around the world, uh, or particularly more in the U.S., uh, converge on Capitol Hill. Uh, to actually attend the meetings uh, with um, the senators uh, led by Senator Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader. And, and many of them actually, you know, voiced their dire concerns, um, invoking uh, popular science fiction uh, about the possibilities of um, human or humanity uh, losing, you know, control uh, to the advanced um, artificial intelligence systems um, that we have today. And if, you know, right safeguards are not put in place, uh, that there's always a, you know, major consequences in the future. Uh, but of course, um, they all necessarily do not agree on, you know, what's a regulation uh, that is needed for the artificial intelligence and what that means. And, and I can tell you that uh, similarly, uh, members of the Congress um, also are not really, um, you know, they, they don't have some sort of consensus on how to go about it. Uh, don't forget that um, since the um, invention, or will I say the, um, the, the advent of uh, technology um, decades ago, it's been so hard to actually, you know, regulate that industry. But um, AI is actually coming on the verge of, um, you know, what we now see in the science fix, uh, fiction movies where um, the computers or robots are going out of control of, you know, the, the human uh, capacity. And I think uh, most of the tech, you know, executives that are present are actually raising those concerns that if nothing is done about it, that it could be some dark side that could change the course of humanity. Well, Rotimi, technology, believer, uh, technology leaders believe that AI regulation can promote responsible AI development and deployment. But just how worried should we all be if artificial intelligence goes unregulated? Well, that's a big concern. Uh, that's a big worry because if it goes unregulated, uh, we're definitely going to have a world where um, machine, first of all, will take over a majority of the jobs and that will cause a lot of crisis uh, within um, the human um, uh, race, so to speak. And, um, and apart from that, um, the, the lack of um, control, because at that point, um, some you know, our devious people within the industry might just want to have uh, control and which government will not be able to do anything about it. And that's the biggest concern. But some concrete proposals were uh, made um, uh, by um, some senators, uh, like Senator Amy uh, Klobuchar, uh, who, of course, has said that um, uh, they, each of the, the AI-generated um, um, software should require disclaimers, especially when it comes to election um, ads um, in terms of, you know, imagery and sounds. If you recall that during the um, election, uh, pre-election um, Republican uh, debates, uh, we saw something 
um, like that that mimics uh, former President um, Donald Trump, uh, which of course wasn't his real voice. And we've seen a plethora of that on social media recently where uh, it's a, a, an image um, doesn't tally with you know, the voice, which means that it was AI generated um, um, uh, voice, you know, that was you know, superimposed on each other. So those are really big concerns that you can actually mimic or actually get, you know, a similar um, imagery of someone uh, to impersonate uh, someone or for someone's, um, you know, privacy um, uh, stop. So that's that's just really big concern, and, um, and the approach that um, the uh, Congress is actually looking into it is uh, quite different. Uh, again, uh, some uh, Republicans are really looking at an over or authority, like doing an oversight um, on the power to audit, you know, the certain AI systems uh, before they're being required to give in um, license uh, going forward. Rotimi, speaking of Donald Trump, let's talk about him for a bit. A pre-trial hearing takes place in Georgia for election interference of the 2020 election. What can we expect to play out? Well, currently, uh, the Federal Appeals Court uh, are trying to quickly consider the former president's uh, claims that uh, presidential immunity actually protects him from being held liable for the statement that he made in 2019. And of course, which it denied that he sexually attacked um, the uh, New York writer um, in the 1990s. And the court is actually saying that um, they want to expedite that appeal um, in a way that um, will uh, quickly arrive at um, a decision um, before the January 15th hearing. Uh, don't forget that uh, the president also made um, similar comments um, this year, uh, which the um, the uh, prosecutors are actually looking at and saying that, well, if um, it can be forgiven for 2019 comments as a president of the United States, uh, but the 2022 uh, comments he made um, regarding that same um, issue uh, cannot go um, unheard of. Uh, so, and, and that's exactly what um, the court is trying to look at. And, you know, many political watchers are really looking at how uh, Donald Trump uh, will be able to survive this because looking at, you know, the uh, four indictments that he has had in the last one year and uh, coupled with this and perhaps maybe many more to come, uh, that could actually affect his, um, his chances um, moving forward. Perhaps maybe he could also uh, put some sort of, um, you know, momentum on his uh, campaign uh, moving forward. All right, and thank you so much, uh, Rotimi, for bringing us up to speed regarding these uh, issues.